The Challenge of the Yukon. The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. In the headquarters of the Northwest Mounted Police, Sergeant Preston stood listening to his superior officer, Inspector Maynard. The older man frowned as he spoke. Alaska had Soapy Smith. The Yukon has Manny Reynolds. Sergeant, he must be stopped. Yes, you're right. As a leader of organized gangsterism, he terrorizes prospectors and trappers who are carrying gold dust and valuable furs along the remote trails. And he's clever. He's wanted for murder and robberies. As you know, we've been trying to catch up with him for the last six months. Every outlaw makes at least one mistake, Inspector. That mistake is usually enough to hang him. Well, I hope you're right. I suppose there's a reason why outlaws like Reynolds operate in the Yukon. Besides being a place of great wealth, the country's so big... They feel the law won't be able to touch them. I can't give you a definite lead on Reynolds. All you have to go on is the list I gave you. Well, that gives me an idea of where he's been anyway. I'll start to work on it immediately. And we'll do everything possible to help you. If you want a man to work with you... Well, thanks, Inspector. I have all the help I'll need. Who do you plan to take with you? King. King? Oh, Yes. I know of your attachment to your dog, Sergeant, but I'm talking about... You don't understand, sir. King and I have been working together for a long time. He's more valuable to me than anyone else could ever be. Well, I won't interfere with whatever plans you have. I certainly hope you aren't making a mistake. A dog in this country is a beast of burden. A fine, splendid animal in its place. But in a case like this, uh, I don't know. We'll see, Inspector. We'll see. As Sergeant Preston left police headquarters, the great dog King followed close at his heels. The Monty's blue eyes narrowed. Well, that list Inspector Maynard gave us is something to start on, fella. As I see it, Manny Reynolds is slowly working west. Pulled jobs in several towns and long trails that seem to indicate that's what he has in mind. <laughs> so we'll head towards Seahorse City, King. And perhaps before long we'll find a more definite clue. A few days later, in the bank in Seahorse City. Uh, yes, sir, gents. Uh, what can I do for you? This is a hole in the pot, ma'am. Unless you want to get hurt handed with the dust in that drawer. Why, why, well, you... Quick about it. Pete, you and Sam lift the dust out of the safe. Yeah, sure, Manny. All right, all right. What are you stalling for? I, uh, I was just caught up. Manny, he's got a gun. You all right? Uh, I'm all right. You got my arm. That small-time pen pusher ain't going to reach for any more guns. <laughs> Get that dust and let's march. In Seahorse City, late the next night, young Dr. Wells sat talking to his wife, the light from the oil lamp flickering and casting weird shadows along the walls of the snug cabin. So they got away, Fred? Yes. And the only man who could identify them died with a bullet through his heart. I don't know, Molly... I don't know why the law doesn't stop this sort of thing. They will be stopped. They must be. People are always punished for... 
was that. What? I thought I heard something outside. You see what I mean? You can't feel safe even in your own cabin. For only some way to find Sergeant Preston. It's been a long time since we've seen him in Seahorse. Yes, and he's never been needed more. <laughs> Freddy! Be quiet, lady. I ain't carrying this gun just for show. What do you want? We have no money here. You're wasting your time. You're the sawbones here, ain't you? Yes, I'm a doctor. Well, I got a job for you to do. Put on your mackinac and step lively. Oh, wait a minute. Like I said, Doc, I don't carry this gun for show. Coming with me, see? You act sensible. Ain't no one going to get hurt. Fred, Fred, maybe you'd better go with him. All right. All right. I'll go with you. Who's sick? Ain't exactly a case of sickness. Now, lady, you want to see your husband get back here, you keep your mouth shut about my little visit, see? You don't have to threaten me, you hoodlum. If you dare harm my husband, I'll have you hunted down, no matter where you take him. Ain't nobody going to be hunted down. What happens to him is up to you. I'll be all right, honey. Now, come on. We've wasted enough time already. Goodbye, Molly. And don't worry. Be careful, darling. Where are you taking me? I'm putting this bandana over your eyes. So you can't see where I'm taking you. I might as well tell you, Doc. You have to dig a bullet out of a fella's arm. That's all you got to do. Now get in a sled. All right. Must you, Husky. Must you. I'm telling you, before you get any ideas in your head, if you don't do a good job, you get paid off in lead. It was a few hours later. Sergeant Preston halted his dogs in front of Fred Wells' cabin in Seahorse City. Okay, go, you husky. All right, fella, let's go in to see the doctor. Sergeant. Sergeant Preston. Molly, what's wrong? Oh, come in, Sergeant, please. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Well, is there anything I can do? Maybe. Maybe you'll know what to do. Sergeant Preston listened to Molly Wells' story and frowned. She told him of the robbery and murder in the bank a few days before, and of the man who visited the cabin, forcing the doctor to go with him. He, he threatened to kill Fred if I told anyone. Where are you going? There'll be tracks in the snow, Molly. King and I'll follow them. But if you do, you're endangering Fred's life. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have told you. You don't have to trust me, Molly. Come on, King. We might have a long trail ahead of us. But I have a hunch we'll find what we set out for at the end of it. At Manny Reynolds' cleverly concealed hideout miles north of Seahorse City, Fred Wells worked on the wounded outlaw's arm. Reynolds himself was far from a desirable patient because, like all men of his kind, his reaction to pain was that of a coward. Oh, oh, what? Where are you? You want me to get this bullet out, so keep quiet. You, over there. Yeah? Hold his arm. Pete. Here, yeah, boss, I'm here. I just saw to something. You might have been followed when you left Seahorse City. Yeah, we wasn't. I took care of all that. You would. Uh, take it. Take it easy, Doc. <laughs> You and Lefty go out on the trail and keep watch, you hear? It's freezing cold out there, man. Freezing or not, I ain't taking any chances. The doctor's wife might have told somebody you brought him out here. Why, oh, you low-living suspicious devil. You don't have to you be afraid. You keep out of this. We'll settle with you later. The reason me and the boys ain't never seen the inside of a jail is because Manny Reynolds is always ready for trouble a long time before it comes. You know what to do, Pete? Yeah. I know what to do. When Sergeant Preston came into view far down a shallow valley, he and his dogs were sharply outlined on the moonlit trail. The two outlaws, serving as lookouts, acted quickly. <laughs> King caught the scent of the two men as he sampled the sharp Yukon air. Oh, I see. Someone dropped on the trail. Perhaps he's been... Oh, you huskies! Ho! Oh. The he walked toward the motionless figure in the snow. As he bent low to examine the man, 
Pete's feet shot up suddenly, catching the policeman off guard. At the same moment, Lefty came from behind the protection of a huge rock. Like a streak of lightning, King threw himself on the two men. Furiously, he fought them, sinking his teeth into their hands and clothing. Get that bastard dog! King dodged. And his one thought was to get to his master. King! King, they'll kill you, boy! Go on, King! Away! For a moment, the great dog hesitated. He didn't understand Preston's sharp command. Why did he order him away? Do you hear me, King? Away! Slowly, with a heavy heart, King loped toward the timber. Always, he'd obeyed Preston's commands blindly. Well, if it ain't the mountain. <laughs> Lefty, wait till Manny sees what we got. <laughs> so you two got the drop on Sergeant Prison. I never expected we'd have the uh, pleasure of holding a gun on you, Marty. You wouldn't have, Reynolds, if your man here hadn't done such a good job of playing dead. Well, you're holding the cards. What do you plan to do? How'd you find us? Who directed you to this place? Eh? Don't talk, eh? Maybe it was the doctor's wife. And just maybe, Manny. Maybe I didn't stop in Seahorse City. Sergeant, you shouldn't have come here. Seems we're outnumbered anyway, Sir. Bones is right, Muddy. You never should have come here. What are you going to do, Manny? There's only one thing to do. Kill him. Hey, now, it's suicide to kill a Mountie. Yeah, it is, Manny. Maybe you boys don't know as much about Preston as I do. He was the one that was responsible for Whitey McLaughlin getting it in the neck. And Whitey was a friend of yours? Yeah, a good friend. If we don't get you, you'll get us, right? That's right. I set out to find you, and I have. It would have been better for you if you hadn't. You can't get away with this. Your job here is done, Doc, so keep quiet. Or you'll get what we're going to give the money. You know, Mountie, it seems to me you're making a mistake. Yeah? A mistake of overconfidence. I'll hand it to you, all right? You're plenty cool. Just what do you mean? <laughs> you don't think that dog of yours is going to save you, Marty? Even as Sergeant Preston whistled for King, the sharp whistle that had always been a signal between the two of them, the Mountie wondered and hoped. <laughs> and as King waited outside the cabin, he heard. He'd waited. A powerful bond that was like a magnet held him to the place where Preston was. He'd waited, and as King heard his master calling him, he knew why. This was what he'd been listening for. He looked at the cabin, and from one of the windows saw the light streaming across the snow. It was a large window, and as he measured the distance, King broke into a run, stealing his lean, muscular body for the impact that was to come. What the... Get that dog! I'll take that gun, Manny. All right, you. Good boy, King. All right, you men, put your hands up. You're all under arrest. And in Inspector Maynard's office, a week later, King stood beside Sergeant Preston. Sergeant, you've done a remarkable piece of work. With no help at all, you brought in the whole Reynolds gang. With no help at all, Inspector? No, that isn't true. I had help and... Believe me, I needed it. Uh, King? That's right, sir. King. <laughs> yes, fellow. Thanks to you, the case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. <laughs>